So what I wanna do is detail with you guys today how you can take and set up uh, mini cube, mini cube, however you want to say it, uh, in a Windows Server 2019 virtual machine with Hyper-V installed. So you can do this on a variety of operating systems, Linux, Mac OS, uh, you can do Windows 10 with the uh, client version of Hyper-V. I, in my home lab, I've got full Windows Server 2019 Hyper-V technology uh, running on a few VMs, so that for me is what I'm going to be displaying and demonstrating today. So just to uh, show you guys, um, I have Hyper-V installed, I've got the role installed, I've already rebooted. Uh, one of the things that you want to make sure of is that you have an external switch available uh, for Minikube to interact with, which I do. Uh, so went through created this beforehand. Um, also, this particular virtual machine um, is, like I mentioned, um, it is Windows Server, if I can type, Windows Server 2019. Uh, I'm just using standard edition here. And I did go ahead and put eight gigs of memory on there. Uh, I tried this with four gigs of memory and I actually ran into an out of memory command when I tried to start the Minikube cluster uh, to uh, bring the pod uh, or the Kubernetes cluster online to run uh, various pods. So basically, that's the layout of this server. I also have uh, Chocolatey installed. So there's two ways that you can install Minikube, and that is via the new Winget package manager for Windows or the Chocolatey package manager. Uh, Winget actually does not work with uh, Windows Server 2019, at least officially. So I'm going the, the Chocolatey route as a package manager. I've used it for years, uh, familiar with it. Most of you guys probably have as well. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be doing and using today. So how do we get started? Well, it's as simple as uh, typing in Choco install mini cube. cube. So basically all you're gonna see is uh, it start to install the mini cube application we're gonna get a prompt to run a script, I believe here in just a moment, that we will need to validate. So there we have it. Do you want to run the, the scripts? We're gonna say all. And uh, basically what you're seeing is the Minikube application is being downloaded. It's installed now. Uh, Chocolatey has installed the packages. So we're ready to uh, start interacting with uh, Minikube. So now that it is installed, all we literally have to do is start our Minikube cluster. So to do that, I am going to type uh, Minikube start. And one thing I really like about Minikube is it actually will detect the driver that it needs to use. As you can see, it knows we're on Windows Server 2019. It's uh, chosen the Hyper-V driver so it's starting to uh, pull down what it needs for this particular environment. And really nice, it takes all the complexity out of uh, setting up Kubernetes, uh, especially if you've never done that before. Setting up Kubernetes from scratch is not for the faint of heart. So essentially, if you're wanting to learn Kubernetes to begin with, uh, you don't wanna get in uh, you know, weighed down, I guess, and slowed down in your learning path uh, just to get a working environment up and running. So that is the real value of Minikube. And just a couple of quick notes while the install is running with that is Minikube is made for this purpose, for uh, not only learning, but also for developers so they can cre quickly create their own Kubernetes environment that they can use to personally develop applications. Uh, it gives them quick access to be able to interact with a real Kubernetes cluster as they would in production. So a lot of benefits there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and let this finish out and come back to you guys in just a moment. All right, so the uh, Minikube cluster is up and running, and 
I uh, just wanted to show you just a couple of things here. So one thing you're going to notice, I've got a Hopper V Manager up. I wanted to show that this literally spins up a lightweight VM, a couple of gigs of memory. So that is where it's actually running uh, the resources on our uh, Windows Server 2019 server. Um, so now let's take a look. Let's uh, see how we can interact with the server. I've got a couple of commands I want to paste in. Uh, this is the kubectl command or kube control command, as some uh, may uh, say it. Uh, you can say uh, kubectl get, and then we're going to use the switches PO and then dash capital A. And you can see your namespaces, see the various uh, components that uh, were spun up as part of the uh, minikube cluster. And uh, so we can see that we can interact with this cluster as we would any other Kubernetes cluster. Um, one other really cool thing as well is you can, uh, via Minikube, it allows you to easily spin up the Kubernetes dashboard, uh, the web dashboard uh, that will allow you to see uh, via a GUI interface uh, your Kubernetes cluster running on the Minikube uh, tool. So as you can see, with one command, uh, which that command is just simply minikube dashboard, I can literally uh, spin up that uh, web dashboard easily uh, and have access to all of the tools and uh, various things that you're going to see in a live production Kubernetes uh, cluster. So another great aspect of this tool, and you can see how easy it is once again, so let's run a simple test application. And I'm going to uh, paste in a few commands uh, to get going here. So we're, what we're gonna do is uh, basically, if I can copy and paste, we're going to run a few uh, commands to basically pull down and actually deploy an application on our Minikube Kubernetes cluster. So, uh, there we go, we've got this hello Minikube application that we're pulling down. We're going to assign a port to expose it to be able to connect to the application uh, via port 8080. So as we see there, it's exposed. Now we're going to type this command to take a look at the services. And as we can see here, we have the application, we uh, have the cluster IP, the ports uh, that have been configured to expose the application. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to allow Minikube to launch the application, kind of like the uh, web dashboard. We're gonna use the command Minikube service hello dash Minikube. So, what this is going to do is basically show us that the application is running. Pretty awesome. Uh, so as we see here, we've got our external IP, so to speak, or the, the IP that I can connect to uh, this service on, the service port, and then we actually see a response from the application uh, that we've provisioned. And here we see the uh, additional information that is displayed from the Minikube uh, service, hello Minikube uh, command. So very awesome tool to be able to really get familiar with the kubectl command uh, as well as uh, some of the other uh, workflows that you go through to actually publish applications, kind of get into how uh, the applications work on a Kubernetes cluster. So that is pretty much it. And you can, if you want, you can uh, tear down your uh, Minikube cluster by simply typing in Minikube stop. And as you will see, what this will do is, if I spell it correctly, it will, uh, much like the start command does the Minikube stop, command tears down the cluster, powers it off, 
uh, does all the things that were done with the startup sequence. So again, really awesome tool. If you're looking at learning Kubernetes, I highly recommend it, especially if you're going after the certified Kubernetes administrator exam. Uh, Windows 2019, even a trial edition, if you want to download that, is a great platform to learn not only uh, containers on a Windows environment, but also uh, be able to use tools such as Minikube uh, to kind of see how this works in a Hyper-V uh, hosted environment and how Minikube is able to interact with and uh, deploy those applications there. Well. I'm Brandon Lee once again with Virtualization How To and hope you enjoyed the video. Hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you guys uh, soon. Thanks a lot.